Hi, this is Ivan with Yellowfin. Today, we're going to walk you through the full process of setting up Yellowfin signals on Google Analytics data. Let's get right into it. In Yellowfin, to create content, simply click on the plus button. If you don't have a Google Analytics data source set up or the connector loaded, you can download that from our Yellowfin marketplace. Once you have downloaded the plugin, which contains the connector and pre-built content, you can drag the plugin straight into this new connection pop-up and drop it here. You can also load this plugin at the plugin management page. Here we can connect to the Google Analytics data source. Simply provide the necessary account credentials that you're going to connect to GA with. In this scenario, I'm going to use mine and allow Yellowfin to authenticate with it. You'll get a pin. Copy and paste that pin into the data source area and validate that. And you're pretty much ready to go. Now, you have the option of saving this source or launch the preview content, which is what I'm going to do now. What this does is automatically give you access to a whole suite of reports and dashboards for GA, including the business metadata layer in the form of a Yellowfin view. This gives you the ability to immediately create new analysis of a prepared data model, including column definitions and business metadata ready to go. However, there's a tiny issue with how GA provides their data. Let me show you what that is. I'll drag in page title and set the mandatory date filters through the API. Just one day's worth of data for now, for Monday. And I'll add in the page views metric. Querying for a day is already returning over 1,000 records. GA unfortunately has a limitation of 10,000 records per query. So this isn't really going to cut it for signals and it's time series analytics over time. So how do we solve this? Well, Yellowfin's data prep product allows reports to be put as input steps. So all we did was create the reports to get the data that we wanted, filter that, and use that in the transformation flow to pipe data from GA into a database of our choosing. Just to show you how it works, all we do is drag both reports in as input steps and set the dates for the query. To ensure we stay within the limitations of the GA API, we run it as a daily query for the dates we want to build a history for. Once we roll this into production, these filters will be changed to rolling dailies rather than the user prompt ones we see now. Here's how our GA flow looked like. Note that your flow might have less or more transform steps according to your objectives. Along the way, we filtered out certain pages that weren't of interest, including community, university, and portal logins this time. We split the data to get the max count of page views for each unique page every day, ultimately merging it back onto the detailed web session info and piping it into the Postgres database. We also applied a few inline transformations along the way, but you can easily check that out from our blog. One thing to note of is that you can run the entire flow and preview the output without writing it to the database first. This is done by toggling design mode, and as seen here, the description and text color changes to warn you about it. So do be careful as we will run to completion and overwrite your target tables in this mode. This is how we manually run this flow to build a historical time series and get around the API limitation for GA. Once we've done that, we change the filters from user prompts to rolling daily ones and schedule this flow to automatically run every day. Once we had piped the transform GA data into a table, we created a Yellowfin view on top of it. Let's go through this process. We select the new output table and go for the multiple tables option, which guides us to the view builder. Here, we get to perform additional data modeling, but we don't need that for today's scenario. I want to set up assisted insights and signals on this data set, so we click on a robot icon at the top. Here, we have the general settings that help guide both assisted insights and signals. Firstly, the primary date field. What's the date field that will be used to drive time series analytics? In our GA data, we only have one, so we'll select that. Secondly, the date period. This is more of a granularity question for the time series itself. The GA data is on a daily level, so it makes sense to select day here. And thirdly, the data range. Think of this as the window size, the length of the time period to be analyzed. This also drives how far back the time slider goes in your signals charts. The key variables tab guides you to select metrics and dimensions that are important for assisted insights to analyze. As part of this process, you can also select whether higher values are good or bad for each metric. 
High page views are good, so that's fine. Higher exits are bad, so we'll select it as such. There's also a new related checkbox for metrics. Selecting them here means that these metrics can be compared against generated signals via the related tab. For example, selecting unique page views as a related metric means that any signal job generating signals from this view will have this metric available for comparison when you're exploring a signal. We selected the dimensions that we wanted for assisted insights. Now, if a dimension isn't important enough for a signal, but might be useful to explain why something changed in assisted insights, is a good opportunity to select them here. For example, we wanted signals on pages being hit, which are page titles, but not on landing pages, which tracks where users come from once they're on our site. So we had landing pages included as part of assisted insights instead. Lastly, the signal tab. Now, we have a few different kinds of signal analysis jobs set up here, but let's create a new one. The analysis patterns are available in three different job types. We want to receive instant alerts on spikes, drops, and breakouts in page views, which are all outliers essentially, so we'll select the outliers job type here. Name the job and give it a description. Because we've set the primary date field and date period earlier in general settings, it's now been set automatically here. You can configure the period of analysis in a few different ways. Basic Compare uses a single rolling period, which can set to days, weeks, months, and so on. Advanced Compare compares two rolling periods, which can specify with a customizable offset. And Fixed Range compares two specific time periods that you can select on the calendar. During the testing phase, we suggest to use fixed ranges and scheduling it to run only once. You can always come back to this job and modify the timings here once you're ready to productionize this. The next step is about selecting the metrics and combination of dimensions for a signal. Because we set up assisted insights earlier, the same fields have been pre-selected here to save you time. We're going to deselect landing page titles here for a signal because Assisted Insights has landing page titles covered, so we can count on that to explain the signal if landing page titles ever became a statistically significant driver. The last step is only for users who want to tune the default algorithm parameters. You can control the sensitivity slider here if you're getting too few or too many signals. In advanced mode, you can modify these values if you wish. For our scenario, most of these are fine, the only thing we want to change is the analysis threshold percentage. The percentage here allows you to completely ignore low value signals, i.e. slices that are so small compared to a baseline. There's an example here that gives you an idea of how this works, so feel free to refer to that. By default, this is 2.5% of the baseline. Now, because we have so many pages in GA with selected dimensions, we're going to make this 1% of the baseline. We also have a default baseline period of three date time periods, i.e. the number of periods used to create a moving average. Our website visits has a weekly seasonality, so we're matching this value to one seasonality cycle, which is seven days. Click continue and the job's saved. We'll click submit and save the view. It might make sense to have different schedules for different signals analysis jobs. You can check on all the schedules on the schedule management page, and filter for signal analysis. You can look at the timing specifically, confirm the last successful run, and when the next run is. The subtasks window gives a task breakdown of the entire job. This list can be longer or shorter depending on what you selected for the signal and gives a great idea of how long the entire analysis took. If every line item is successful here and there actually are signals, the engine will actually notify you via the timeline and by email. With our outlier signals job, there are six outlier signals found, and we can explore any of them here. Let's have a look at the spike in page views with Bangladesh. As shown in our blog, there is a crazy outlier for page views that's almost 1900% above the moving average. The correlated tab lists all other signals that have gone through correlation analysis and ranks them according to similar time periods found here. Among other correlations, we can see a similar pattern with page views from ads for a particular campaign on a mobile device. Looking at the relevance tab, we can see that page views from Bangladesh only takes up 1% of all page views from a single time period, which is 14 days in this case. Because we've set the analysis threshold to 1% previously, this was picked up as a signal. Remember to test and validate this for your business scenarios. The analysis tab runs assisted insights in real time. This process automatically creates charts and narratives explaining the key drivers for the spike in page views from Bangladesh. 
and presents them through multiple dimensions that have been found to be significant for this spike. Insights that would have taken analysts a long time to manually discover is now automatically done and explained to you in a single click. And that's it for our walkthrough guide on deploying Yelp in Signals on GA data. If you want to find out more about Yelp in Signals and try it on your own data, please visit us at yelpinbi.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.